The Year We Learned to Fly by Jacqueline Woodson, illustrated by Rafael Lopez. The Year We Learned to Fly. That was the year we learned to fly. That was the spring when the rain seemed like it would never stop, and the thunder boomed so hard we weren't allowed to go outside. Use those beautiful and brilliant mind of yours, my grandmother said. Lift your arms, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and believe in a thing. Somebody somewhere at some point was just as bored as you are now. So my brother and I closed our eyes, and for a few minutes that first day, we weren't stuck in our apartment anymore. We were flying over the city we'd known our whole lives, but it was suddenly different, exploding with every kind of flower we'd ever dreamed of growing. That was the summer we learned to fly. When my brother and I couldn't stop fussing with each other over whose turn it was to wash the windows, to feed the dog, to clean the kitchen. We fought and frowned and made silent promises to never speak to each other again. My grandmother said, Lift your arms, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and stop being so mean about everything. Somebody, somewhere, at some point, was just as mad as you are now. So we did, and as the soft wind took us out over the city and past the windows of kids who hadn't yet learned to fly, my brother and I reached for each other's hand, flying and diving and laughing, and leaving all of our mad far behind us. That was the autumn. Our rooms felt too big and lonely, with only us in them, and the darkness coming on so fast. But while we hugged ourselves against the too quiet of it all, we remembered that we didn't have to be stuck anywhere anymore. My grandmother had learned to fly from the people who came before me. They were aunts and uncles and cousins who were brought here on huge ships, their wrists and ankles cuffed in iron. But, my grandmother said, nobody can ever cuff your beautiful and brilliant mind. So our people learned to fly, she said. They dreamed a thing and made it happen, closed their eyes and flew away from home. Lift your arms, my grandmother said. Close your eyes and remember somebody somewhere at some point had to figure out they could fly. That was the winter we moved away from the building and the block and the friends we'd always known to a street where the kids looked at us funny and didn't even answer when we asked them if they wanted to play. It's okay, I said to my brother. Somebody somewhere at some point had to figure out that they were ready for any new thing coming their way. So like the people who came before us, we lifted our arms even higher, closed our eyes even tighter, breathed in deeper, and flew away flew the way we'd known how to, free as the aunties and uncles and cousins who came before us, free as our own beautiful and brilliant minds. For a long time, the kids on the ground watched us. Then one by one, they lifted their arms. One by one, they too learned to fly. The first time I read The People Who Could Fly, American Black Folk Tales, by the brilliant Virginia Hamilton, I realized that through her beautiful story, I was learning to fly. Not with wings, but with words. Her book is the story of how enslaved people escaped their hard lives by lifting up and flying away home. And every page is anointed with the illustrious paintings of Leo and Diane Dillon. 
As a kid, I always wondered how people were able to survive through the horrors of enslavement. But they did, and they passed down their stories and their fables and their memories to the young people coming along after them. And these stories gave us wings. Virginia Hamilton gave me and so many other writers storytelling wings. And with these wings, I have been able to fly past even the hardest of times into the world of my stories. Sometimes, the first step towards change is closing our eyes, taking a breath, and imagining a different way. Jacqueline Woodson